In this video, we'll show you how we've created the lighting for our 3D scene. The topic lighting is a very comprehensive topic and also quite complex. Besides shading, lighting is one of the most important parts to get a nice looking when the result in the end. On the one hand, you can split up the topic lighting in the more technical part. That means what kind of lamps we can use and how can we adjust the settings for this. And on the other hand, the more artistical side, that means how can we use the lighting to create a certain mood in our image, for example. In this short video, certainly we can't tell you everything about lighting. For this topic, there are many books out there or other video tutorials in the internet. Just Google it if you are interested. In this video, we want to concentrate on two main aspects of the lighting. At first, to create a certain mood in our image with the lighting and to set the focus in our image using the lighting. That means guiding the eyes of our viewers to the focus in our scene using the lighting. Another aspect we want to concentrate on is to create a realistic lighting. And due to the fact that we are using the Cycle Swender engine, this is not really hard to do. As you know, in this workshop we want to show you simple workflows, but also very good workflows. And the same thing for the lighting, we don't want to create very complex lighting for our scene, but instead we want to use a very simple way to light up our scene very realistic. Okay, let's take a look inside Blender. Here you can see one of the bicycles from our 3D scene. Using Ctrl B I select a certain area, because we can render nearly in real time in our 3D view. And the smaller the area is you choose, the faster it renders. As you can see, even if we don't have any lamp in our scene, we still got a little bit lighting here. And that's because the world background also lights up our scene. And as you can see, here we have a simple gray background and because of that, we can see the bicycle. Okay, let's have a short look at all the different lamp types we have here in Blender. We have the point lamp. Here the light gets emitted from one point into all directions. Then we have the sun lamp, that's basically an infinite lighting. And using the sun lamp, the shadow gets casted in the same direction from all the different objects. In the lamp settings, you can adjust the strength of the lamps. Then we have the spotlight that creates, as the name already says, a spot, what could be quite useful in some cases. And then we have the area light, that's basically a plane that emits light. Another great thing about the Cycles render engine is that you can use any object as a lamp using an emission material. For that simply select an object, add a new material and here under surface we add an emission shader. Here we certainly can adjust the strength and the color of the light and so in just a second we can light up our scene using different objects. Here a short tip, if you use any object for lighting, navigate to the properties editor under object, cycle setting, way visibility, disable camera. So the object still lights up your scene, but the camera can't see the object anymore. And so basically you can create invisible lamps just like the other lamp objects you can use here in cycles. Yeah, all these lamps are great in many cases, but we want to use an easier and simpler way to create a realistic lighting. And for that, we'll use so-called HDRI maps. Basically, these are 360 degree images of in sky, which have a very high dynamic range. That means the brightness is very good stored in this image. It's not really visible for the naked eye. But to explain the simple, the sun in the image has way more lighting power than all the sky around it. And the great thing about this HDRI maps is that not only the sun lights up our scene, but instead everything on the image, like the sky or the background objects and so on. And this also happens in real life. And so we have a lighting that's a mix between a lot of different colors. Yeah, and this you can create using such an HDRI map. 
By the way, in the commercial version of this workshop, 10 of these HDRI maps are included, which you can use for private and commercial use. And these were created by Greg Zahl for this workshop and even more of his HDRI maps you find on hdrihaven.com. To import such an HDRI map, I navigate to the world settings in the properties editor. Then I click on this dot behind color and choose environment texture. Then I click on open and then I navigate to my folder with my HDRI maps and choose one of them. Now in the rendered border, you can see the background. If you also want to see it in the not rendered view, then you simply can enable world background in the properties menu under display. And then you can see the HDI map also in the background. If you use such HDI maps, there's one important setting you also can find in the world tab under settings, multiple importance. To explain it simple, basically if you enable this option, Blender knows exactly where the light sources are on the image on this HDRI map. Without this setting, Cycles won't know that exactly. And so the rendered image gets much faster, noise-free, without increasing the render samples. Also, I recommend to increase the map resolution to 1024. That's a good basic value you can use anytime. Using this option causes on the one hand a little bit more render time and also a little bit more memory usage. But on the other hand, you get a much better render result you can see clearly here in the image. And what you can see clearly right now, the sun in this HDI map casts clear shadow. Yeah, now we can view the bike from all sides and we have a very realistic lighting in seconds. If you don't want to see the background in the rendered image, you can navigate in the properties editor to render film and enable transparent. Now basically we have the lighting, but we don't see the background. Certainly in the world tab, we can increase or decrease the strength of the background and also very useful in the texture tab. If you choose environment texture down below under mapping rotation, we can rotate this background image. And so we can adjust the direction where the sunlight comes from. And if we have enabled the transparent background so we don't see the background image and then we can rotate the background in a way that the horizon would be not correct anymore but so we can adjust the angle of the sun and so it seems that the sun shines more from above or more from the horizon. Also very nice, if I add a simple sphere with a glossy material on it, you can see we have a very realistic reflection. You can see the area on the reflection where the sun shines on it. It's much brighter than the rest and basically so the reflection is very realistic. If we take a look in the node editor, then you can see down below in the header we have also this world settings and if I click on that, we can adjust the shader of the background. And then for example, we can add a mix RGB node and put it behind the environment texture. And so we can colorize the background. If I choose the add blend mode, in a similar way, we can add a use saturation node to adjust the hue and saturation. And in this way, we very easily can adjust the background in terms of color or strength. Okay, let's try this in our 3D scene. I just enable the ground and the robot. Now, as showed before, I add an HDI map. Here I use the HDI map Bergen from the HDI map pack from hdihaven.com. This also we used for the final rendering. So this also you'll find on the commercial version of this workshop. Also here I enable the multiple importance option and set the map resolution to 1024. Now I switch to the camera perspective and in the render tab under film I enable transparent so that we don't see the HDRI map in the background. So we can concentrate more on the lighting. The lighting strength is too weak from the HDRI map so I set the strength to 2. The lighting mood inside a forest is way different than on an open field because certainly in a forest all the trees are casting shadow. That means we also have to take care how the trees are influencing the lighting. 
Because of that, I enable all the different objects that could influence the lighting. And you can see after enabling all the different objects, the tree in the foreground is still very bright. And the reason for this is that we don't have put any objects behind the camera. And so the tree in the foreground also gets light up by the HDRI map. Yeah, and because of that, we'll add the other trees to our scene. Also, you can see the trees in the background currently stopping the light from shining into our scene on the tank, for example. Because of the reason that we don't show the sky in this 3D scene, that means we set the background to transparent, we now can rotate the background as we like. That means inside the texture tab, mapping rotation, I can adjust the background so that the sun shines from the right upper side into our scene. Also, I enable the trees behind our camera. And then you can see we have the shadow in the foreground. And in our scene here, the sun shines from behind, not from the front. So we have this nice lighting line of the silhouette from the tank. And so it separates a little bit more from the background and we can see the tank even better. What we can see now is that the tree in the foreground is quite bright on the top and also on the ground below this tree. And the reason for this is that the particles of the branches are disabled. So this I enable again and then you can see now we have this realistic shadow below this tree. And also in this way we took the foreground out of focus because it's darker. And in this way automatically the focus gets set in the center of our scene where the robot tank lies. But all in all, I still think the scene is too dark. And because of that, I navigate to the world settings inside the properties editor. And here I enable ambient occlusion. And with this option, our scene gets a little bit brighter overall. That would also light up rooms, for example, when no light comes in. Yeah, and so we can brighten up our scene a bit. And this setting I set to 0.5. Yeah, if you believe it or not, this is our final lighting for our 3D scene. So now let's enable all the other objects to see how this lighting affects the whole scene. Yeah, if you want to fine tune the lighting, for example, to set the focus a little bit more, you can add, for example, a area light behind the persons so that they are a little bit brighter to light up the center of the scene where the persons are. Yeah, and in this way you also can play with different lamps to add more lighting to your scene to simply set the focus points a little bit better. Yeah, and with this simple method we have lighted up our scene. Yeah, and all the other settings about compositing and rendering, which will certainly influence the look of our image very strongly, that we'll show you in the next videos.